Good evening. Thank you for being here tonight. I'd like to call to order the August 13th, 2019 work study session. Clerk, would you do roll call, please? Mayor Wright? Here. Mayor Pro Tem Brown? Here. Council Member Krupa? Here. Council Member Meyer? Here. Council Member Percival? Here. Thank you. Item number four, public comment period, rules of decorum, resolution number 4545. At this time, members of the public may only comment on an item appearing on the agenda. Please adhere to, this, to the following when addressing the council. Comments will be limited to three minutes or less. Comments should be directed to the council as a whole and not directed to an individual council member. Are there any members of the public that would like to speak on this item? Mayor, I have several. Okay. Uh, first is Erica London. And after Erica will be Audie. Yeah. I'm just following the script. Okay. <laughs> Are we talking about something before we see? I'm following Mayor Wright's lead. Okay. Hi. My name is Erica London. I'm from My City Youth Center. Um, my interest tonight obviously is in the skate park. Um, being the community relations person for a youth center here in town, we do currently cater to some of our scooter riders and skaters um, with what we call a box park. A box park is uh, consistent of ramps and rails and other items that are movable. We put them away at night. Um, with our growing body of scooter riders, skater riders, and new interest from people, we are actually building a building so our skate park is going to diminish in size. Um, however, there's more and more kids coming to the youth center looking for safe, sound skate options. We are uh, interested in being part of the process, if possible, in making sure that the standards we carry for safety are built in with any city facility for skate park. We do have a history of um, skating here in this valley. We've got first-hand knowledge of injuries that are possible, uh, you know, outside influences that come in. It is not our opinion that a skate park would bring more crime to the valley. Crime is what it is, and it's here. And I don't subscribe to the idea that it's going to bring in more crime. I do subscribe to the idea that there may be more costs to the city in lawsuits if it's not properly done with security and safety measures in mind. Thank you so much. Yes, thank you. you know, I'm going to go outside of this. I think that it's really important that we see the presentation first, and um, and then um, those here can comment afterwards. But I think it's important that everybody sees what's on the table, and and then we go forward from there. So you'll indulge. <laughs> change, I appreciate it. Good evening, Mayor. Good evening, Council. Um, so tonight we have for you um, the final results of the skate park study, um, feasibility study that we've been working on. I'm going to hit the lights quick and... So just to give you a little bit um, of background and some background for the public, um, we've had requests for a skate park or some type of skate recreation facility in this valley for over the last decade. And in 2016, the City Council established a skate park task force to start kind of looking at um, what that might mean for the valley and, and um, if there was interest. As we started holding our meetings with the task force, um, we realized very quickly that we were probably not the experts sitting around a table, um, all of us adults that don't necessarily skateboard. So we came back to council in 2017, and with full consensus of the council, um, we were directed to move forward in performing a skate park feasibility study. And you'll have to bear with me one second. So what we are doing tonight is, um, first of all, I, I kind of wanted to talk about what the purpose of a study is. There's been um, a lot of questions I've received just today, 
and you know what is what is this about what's the workshop for what we are doing is presenting information that we've gathered from the community um, I've got with me um, Mark LaRue who is with Stantec that's the company that the consultant that we contracted with Mark is the senior principal landscape architect and then Canton Russell um, who is also with Stantec he's actually um, kind of on a new adventure but still arm in arm with Stantec he's now with New Line Skate Parks and Canton has really been kind of the lead of this he's been the face to the community for us um, so I know a lot of people in the audience recognize him from the meetings that we've had um, so what we did is in 2018 we held a couple of community meetings to get some input um, separately we also took some trips out to some other skate parks we looked at um, local properties here in the city and all of that information was put into this feasibility study the purpose of the study is really just this is there community interest it needs to ask that question and kind of determine what it is um, where would it go if we were to do a skate park what makes the most sense what would it potentially look like again very conceptual this is not a final project this is simply getting ideas together and then the study also includes some other items that would need to be considered so when we talk about things like um, the liability like the security is there fencing is there not so what you're looking at tonight is really conceptual um, after you have all of the information we're basically looking for you to acknowledge receipt of the study that we promised you council and then any further discussion that you want to have and tell us you know which which direction to go beyond that is absolutely up to you but do understand that in terms of liability and security and some of those really hard questions to answer very important questions um, those are something that well we might have some dialogue about them would really be a whole separate piece for us to really dive into in the event that council wants to move forward so um, with that I'm actually going to hand it over to mr. Canton Russell and um, appreciate by the way all of the people here tonight because we had great participation from the youth and families and businesses and even some seniors in the valley for this so we're pretty excited to show you um, the process as we went through so with that I'll give you Canton hello um, as Kristen mentioned we have done a lot of research um, you know with the community with the meetings and like she said it's really about trying to figure out what the best way to approach this is you know is it something the community is interested in what kind of features did they want to see in the park and where it was located and through all the input we got from the meetings we came up with what we're going to present here and it really comes down to looking at some of the basic benefits um, you know definitely is all ages all gender there's a lot of positive things we're listing here as far as participation the social impact the uh, value of cost per square foot uh, in the usability sense also it can bring uh, revenue generating opportunities with tourism and events and competitions but most importantly it'll be a very good community park that will be very welcoming to family activities and there is uh, a big movement here again with um, sort of all gender all ages it's uh, definitely a big uh, worldwide scale right now in the level of competition and participation it's going to be in the Olympics in 2020 so the request we've been getting as a skate park design consultant for more facilities like this has been on the in increase quite quite a bit and um, we know that there is not a facility here in this area in Hemet and we do we have had got a lot of input and requests saying that they would like to have something like that here for all the activities you see with skateboarding biking scootering a lot of kids who don't necessarily relate to traditional sports like basketball or baseball or football <clears throat> so it's a uh, something they can participate in at their own level their own speed and as an individual instead of a traditional team sport so here's uh, we're just going to show you some um, examples of some other skate parks so you can kind of understand what the possibilities are here 
So we start talking in terms of a, more of a street plaza or urban plaza. Um, this is kind of what you're seeing here, something that looks a bit more natural, that is a legal place to ride. So instead of people skateboarding in downtown Hemet, down the stairs, across ledges, on railings, you're actually emulating some of that authentic terrain and characteristics into the space. And then in the background there, you can see some transitions and bowls there. So there is a way to integrate this into the fabric of the park, make it look natural, have some landscaping inside the park, outside the park, make it look like it belongs there and fits there as a community asset. And you can get sculptural with it. We can incorporate art, colors, materials, again, things that really speak to the community and make it feel like it belongs in Hemet. So it's not necessarily just a facility that you kind of check in and check out like a gym. It's really more of a recreational opportunity and something that really will have a wide appeal to the community and not just the users. You can use it for event opportunities. And uh, you can see here how it kind of fits into this project. This is very similar terrain um, that we could see here in Hemet based off the feedback we got. You can see there's some very organic transitional bowl-like features there on the right side and then more of the urban street plaza terrain on the left and some landscaping and stormwater and kind of natural environmental sustainable infiltration opportunities inside and outside the park. So just an example of that. And here's another one here. This was uh, actually developed at a youth facility. Um, this one has a covering, but you can see again that it has some terrain that's really uh, created to integrate into the surroundings there um, in that area right there. Uh, just another overview of uh, a variety of terrain. Again, you can kind of see um, some bowl features, organic shapes, and kind of a Again, more urban street plaza and how that integrates into the park. The um, study and concept we developed here isn't quite that big, but the ratio is very similar, about 50-50, of the kind of terrain you're seeing in that picture there. Very similar. And this is just another example of something you can do that really is unique. This one was um, had a lot of input from the academia uh, community and you know, created some kind of literature books that could be skatable. Just another example of creativity and ideas that can be done there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so, uh, sorry. So, Council, just to share with you, um, going through those features, so one of the things that we did, and while the, the skateboard community knows well what they use, um, but we wanted to make sure that everybody was kind of educated on the different types of things. So when we went into these community um, meetings, um, there was kind of an education element to, to some things that maybe the, the youth around here do, don't see. So we wanted you to kind of see those pictures as well. So. Yeah, well, um, these next pictures will actually show you what we presented to the community. There's a lot of participation, and I will preface that, as in the pictures on that previous slide, the amount of people who showed up was a great turnout. Um, compared to a lot of meetings we go to around North America and different cities, the participation and um, attendance was very well attended con considering what we typically see. I think there's probably about 60, 60 plus people there, both meetings, so it was very well attended. And you, as you can see in the pictures, everyone's very engaged, a lot of great input, a lot of great ideas. So again, it's not us as a consultant coming and telling them what they're going to get, it's them telling us what they want and us really kind of relaying that and creating the concept based off of that input. So as you can see here, this was uh, one of the first exercises we did. We showed all the potential features and terrain possibilities, and we had everyone have um, a handful of uh, colored dots. They put the dots on their preferred features, and we used that as one way to get um, kind of an analysis of what it is they really wanted in the park. And next. And then we also broke them up into groups. So you can see that picture there. They're all the different tables. And they all came up with some of their own original concept ideas with scale drawings and scale features that they were able to cut and paste and put on the site plan and draw in some of their ideas. They made a list of ideas. Uh, we had an open discussion about things they liked and didn't like. So we wanted to make sure, again, that when this concept was developed, they felt like it was something they came up with and they were actually something they could embrace and be a uh, part of. Yep, take ownership. And some of the input was not just from the skaters, but the community 
um, itself, Ingus Gifted Exxon. And this was uh, some of the feedback we got from the um, online and hard copy in-person surveys where we asked a variety of questions about um, the preferred terrain, when they wanted to ride, where they typically ride now, um, the things they didn't and did not like to ride. And so we got a lot of consensus based off of that. There's probably about maybe 12 pages of this information. This is just a couple of pages from that. But I think you can see that we got a lot of good uh, valid information off of those forms. And then at the second meeting, based off that information, we presented uh, these two concepts. This was one of two. And again, we had um, some forms that are filled out about what they did and did not like about each one of these concepts. So that's uh, concept number one. There's concept number two. And then based off of that information, we um, let everyone know kind of what sites we looked at as to where this could go. And um, those are the three sites that we narrowed it down to, the top three sites. You can go to the next one. And then um, one of the things that was uh, discussed to lead us to Gibble Park was the fact that it was already an active space. There were already activities happening there. We weren't going to put something active in a passive park. So there was already neighborhood activities happening here. And we did have some members of the existing lawn bowling club show up to the meeting as well to make sure that they were heard and um, acknowledged and making sure that they were not going to be left out of the process. And some of the input they gave us actually also helped us cite the park where we did. And we made sure they signed off on that and were happy with that as well. And then this is kind of the uh, final concept site plan we developed based off all that feedback from the community and the users together. And as you can see, there are some seating opportunities and spectator opportunities outside the park as well as inside, um, tying into the existing parking lot, tying into the existing gazebo and some of the sidewalks. And again, based on the feedback we got from the users of the park, creating a buffer away from other activities, the lawn bowling, the baseball fields, really to kind of thread the needle and situate it into an area that made sense for everybody. So it's not just the users we heard from it was the community as a whole who showed up for these meetings and gave us their input and concerns and we addressed them through the design. And these are some three-dimensional renderings we created to show that space a little bit better. Some of the features that we um, developed hearing from the community. So some of the colors, uh, you can kind of see a bowl there that emulates more of a backyard swimming pool. You have more of a flow snake run kind of feature that was really high up on the request list. You see some plaza-like features with some embankments and grindable ledges, stairs, and railings. You can see some of the connections there to the existing parking lot and within the landscape itself, making sure we had a lot of um, opportunity to have natural drainage um, basins to capture storm water to make sure it was a sustainable facility and using materials that are very durable that could hold up to all kind of terrain and usage so that we didn't have to worry about um, a lot of maintenance costs or maintenance from the facilities uh, department. We did have the facilities um, staff chime in on what they wanted to see here. We had the police department attend the meeting so they could also chime in on what they wanted to see as far as good visibility and safety measures. So a lot of those things were addressed here through that design, as you can see here as well. So just some other views of that, what that space could look like. And I think that really kind of shows that area pretty well. Now this is really the uh, proposed schedule. So right now we have been working through the public input, the preliminary concept design and development and then the final feasibility study and um, presenting this to you tonight. So at this point, we would just, you know, kind of leave this up to council and give final direction. Uh, the proposed schedule could potentially be that if this is uh, approved, this feasibility study, and if you decide to move forward, it just shows some next typical steps what we see in the development of a typical skate park project, what the next steps would be for design development, 
um, construction drawings, going out to bid for construction, and then potentially um, opening the park um, sometime next year. So that's a tentative potential schedule. It is not the schedule, but this is the timeline we typically would see to have this uh, type of facility created and ready for construction. And so um, just to kind of reiterate what I did when I opened up, um, we aren't um, asking because we know there's discussion to be had, um, but we wanted to, to have you have those pieces to know what a timeline would look like um, in the event that you did decide that you wanted to move forward or research it some more. That is really just a sample. So for anybody who is in this room right now that I'm not looking at, um, this is not um, in, you know, this this isn't calendared yet. We're, we're, we still got to talk about it, so. <clears throat> and the next slide there. Oh, so that's kind of me again, isn't it? <laughs> so, um, so really, um, what, what I'm looking for, what we're looking for as staff, um, in terms of this presentation for the work study is really just an acknowledgement from council that we did what you requested we do, which was complete the feasibility study. Um, and then in terms of what happens next, um, kind of like Canton said, that's up to you. There's discussion to be had, um, and we're here for any additional direction from you. So um, with that, if you have questions, we are here. I know there are some more um, public comments, probably. I'd like to hear from council right now. Okay. Yeah, and, and I will say that we've done this process uh, many times similar to this, and like Bonnie said, the process we go through is that this is really just a feasib feasibility in summary to see, is this something the community wanted, where is it going to go, and what could it look, uh, look like, and we would just provide to you typical cost to construct it and a typical schedule to build it. Now, none of that is set in stone to move forward with. It's just there for your information. Right. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank you for the presentation and and the document that you prepared and uh, that we have available to us. And, and, I, and I also like to, to thank the community participation in this at all levels. Obviously, the skaters are motivated and interested, but you brought in other members of the community, and that's critically important to get buy-in. Uh, community-wide so uh, I'm personally very pleased with what I've seen thus far uh, it certainly comes under the head heading of completed staff work uh, up to this point so uh, <laughs> kudos yeah. to everybody for that. I, I do have a few questions so sure uh, I'm, I'm particularly curious uh, when you did your site visits to other skate parks Obviously, when you're coming in to a situation where there is no uh, viable skate park and there's a proposal to try to do something, the enthusiasm is very high and motivation is high. Uh, I've seen that in other communities. And so when you did your site visits, I I'm curious to know uh, if, if part of the questions or observations that you made at the other cities did the enthusiasm or interest uh, wane at all from the early days when it was conceptual and built and everybody's participating and it's great to maybe five years down the road and it's old news and is there any uh, noticeable depreciation of community interest or interest in the skaters? Uh, I know that some skaters, uh, they well, probably all skaters, thrive on the challenge. And once they've mastered the park, uh, it ceases to be a real challenge for them. So uh, there's always new skaters that come along, but they tend to move around to other parks and other sites that are, that are new venues for them. So uh, those are kind of abstract things, and, but if you've got a sense of that, visiting Yeah, I can answer sites. that. Um, I live in San Diego. I was an advocate like a lot of kids I see here in the audience, so um, we had no skate parks at the time. This was in the early 90s. All the skate parks had closed down for because they're all private, so they closed for liability issues. 
Um, so our skate parks were the streets of San Diego. And as you can imagine, we got a lot of tickets and got kicked out of a lot of places. So the parents became upset that we had no place to go. So there was a lot of enthusiasm and a lot of push to get a skate park there. Um, I lived in Ocean Beach, and we worked to develop a skate park there. It took nine years to get that park. And um, the enthusiasm from day one till opening day actually just continued to increase because they really needed a place to go. They were tired of looking over their shoulders and wondering when they were going to get kicked out of the next place. And a lot of um, community members don't necessarily always have the ability to drive to another facility like this. Um, and I could tell you from this concept design, there's nothing like that anywhere near here. Um, we were creating bas basically a timeless design, something that could be progressive for skill levels, progressive for um, different age groups, genders, what have you. So a lot of the things you might see even on TV are similar to the train you see there. So a beginner has a beginner level in this park. The advanced users have the advanced abilities to develop uh, their skills in this park. So a lot of the parks that we've seen um, in the last 15 to 20 years that we developed, because I've been doing this for about 13 years, but been involved with skateboarding for almost 30, um, the amount of people we've seen actually has increased the use of these parks. So going back to the Ocean Beach Park that opened up in 2001, um, there are just as many people using it, if not more, and that was that big push when I was a kid coming up. Eventually became a pro skateboarder. I was a pro skateboarder for 12 years. I traveled around the world to a lot of different facilities across the states, into Europe, and into Asia. And I will say that the demand for these facilities has, has done nothing but increase, actually. So um, it's the opposite. It's, it's not something that's fading away. It's something that's becoming increasingly uh, in demand because people are actually creating careers out of this, as, as myself was able to do. And so now that it's become an official Olympic sport, there are people making a, a living doing this, just like any other athlete. Thank you. Well, I think certainly with, with the advent that it's going to be an Olympic event, uh, that's just going to... Uh, exponentially increase the, the interest in it. Far cry from my day when I had a short two by four and I nailed it. Yeah. Yeah. Me too. Well, well, trust me, I'm in the same boat. I mean, the thing that we talk about is my my vision, my kind of passion for doing this is really developing a place for these kids to ride that we didn't have. My whole career was skateboarding illegally. We had no park until I was already a pro skateboarder. So you know, the the thing of kind of running from the police and having to travel out of state or overseas just to go to a legal skate park was very frustrating. So now that these um, kids have a place to go, it's really increased participation. So I, I'm in the same boat. We just didn't really have that growing up. And so we just have seen a lot of participation because of these facilities. And and it's also, yeah, well, they will. They'll, they'll chime in on that. But it's also helped. Um, the other thing I've seen is also helped on someone made a comment about crime. A lot of kids who normally just don't really attach themselves to something positive will get into something negative if they don't have something to do. So a lot of people I knew that before they found skateboarding and had a place like this to go were getting into a lot of trouble until they found an opportunity for them to adapt to a legal place to ride. So, In the interest of time, yep. because we have about 18 speakers sure. to, to line up. Yeah. So any other? Does council have any other questions right at this time before we have the speakers in? Okay, we'll do okay. that. So um, I'll have to limit the time to two, two minutes each so that you've all come out to be a part of this, and I want to make sure you have some time to speak. If somebody has said, if a number of people have said kind of the same things you would say, um, be mindful of that because I, I just want to make sure that who wants to speak would like to speak but, and that we have the time for it. So who is the first speaker? I'll call several names, and if you guys can uh, kind of line up so everybody has time. The first one will be Audi, Audi, and then Sergio, and then Nicole. You can line up against the wall here when your name's called. Reese will be after that. So Audi, Sergio, Nicole, Reese. Audie. Name. My name's Audie. Audie? Okay. 
Um, I think, like, we should have a skate park because, like, it would take people off the streets and, like, we, like, ride, like, we, like, it's our passion. Like, we want to make a career and, like, it's going to be, like, way easier. Like, and, like, it wouldn't, like, cost the city as much, like, to fix things if, like, you know, like, if we had a skate park to ride. So, like, it wouldn't, like, be so, like, you know, like, broke, like, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I don't know if I can top him, but so that was pretty good. But you know, I'm I'm on the same level as this kid. I I spoke it. He said it. You know, you guys by providing this park will give kids an opportunity to be someplace safe, someplace where they won't be causing damage into the community, someplace where they can go to and possibly build a career. I mean, you look at somebody like Tony Hawk that came up and made that into something that you know he's talking about being a pro skater. This man not only was in movies, like made all kind of money, like. Hammett could be that next place that, you know, discovers an individual. How cool would it be to say, this skater is from Hammett, California, and put us on the map? Like, we don't have that opportunity. Okay. And a lot of these kids have skills. I mean, we, I'm, I'm with Hammett Valley Incidents. We're out there patrolling all the time. We see them, like, in parking lots. We see them where, in places where they shouldn't be. But you see some of the things that they can do, and you're just like, wow. I mean, if they had a place to really, like, like, fine-tune that skill, I mean, it would be amazing. Thank so I think so it's much. definitely needed. Thank you. Hi, guys. Hi. Mr. Brown, I've stood here for seven years asking for the skate park. I haven't waned and I haven't quit. I have had seven years of these skaters out here. Every time it comes up, Please give us a park. Please give us a park, Council. It's seven years. Canton took nine. We could possibly see something in one. We could beat Canton's record. We could beat his record. Seriously. A pro skater that took nine years and became a skater. My son has already gone on to college. When I started this project, he was a kid. I haven't quit, guys. I'm not gonna. You know me well enough. So here's what I'll say. Seven years ago when I pitched this to start, I said, this park could be a competition park. This could be a revenue. This could bring tourism. This could bring people together in a community that needs it more than anything I've ever seen. And we deserve it. Our city, our town, our people, we deserve that. We're not lesser than, we're better than. And this city can do that. So please, let the skaters skate, the scooters scoot, the bikes go. And if the handicapped people want to have a handicap accessible park, we did that. We did that in this one project. No one's been left out. Now we just need you guys to look at everybody and say it's time to go forward. One more step, guys. Just one more. Thank you. State your name, please. My name is Reed Reedman, and um, I'd like to yield my time to my father, Sean. Hello, my name is Sean Weedman, and I'll have about two minutes, so if I can b combine both of my son's time and my time together, so we have four minutes. You can't really tonight. Uh, otherwise, I, I can't let you do that tonight, but just talk fast. Okay. okay. So, uh, I have a bunch of young men here. I have other young men that come over to my house, over on Garland. I have anywhere from 8 to 15 kids that skid out in front of my house. I've built ramps. I've put them out there. I'm soon to be a pastor. And so what I use this as is I use it as a ministry over at my house. And can I tell you, the, the skating parks that I have to bring them to, uh, 40, 50 miles away, takes an hour and a half sometimes. Uh, Hemet is, is built to have a skate park. We have skaters here that have to skate on private property to uh, obtain the level of skill that they want. Uh, they can't just skate out in front of my house to get the skill level they want. So they're uh, in contact with 
sheriffs, with police, with security, and they're very respectful. And you know, you'll see videos where kids are always yelling at uh, different security guards. Our kids don't do that. They make friends with them, and then those security guards say, "Hey, look it." Come after I'm away. You can skate for a little while. And I'll tell you, the, the schools, the schools even do the same thing. Hey, look it, we're going to close in a minute. You can come back and skate, just because they're nice to them. And so, having a skate park that's local is going to keep them safe. So they're not skating out there on the street where we have homeless people laying next to them or yelling like they do at my sons or taking their scooters or skateboards and throwing them. So if there's any way that um, I can help, I can have the You can 15, be a part of the committee. Thank you. I have 15 <laughs> young men that can give you time. So thank you very much. Thank you so much. Okay. Next speaker is James House and then Stella, Terry, Q. James, Stella, Terry, Q. Hi. Um, my name is James House. I'm 14 years old. Um, I'm very new to the Hemet area. I've been living here for about six weeks now. And apparently there's not a skate park. <laughs> but um, so I'm a Gold Star kid, which means I've lost my uh, father at, um, in the military. Uh, he died in Iraq. And I've been... Uh, somewhat a different kid in certain situations and one community that's just kind of taken me in and really helped me through a lot through um, stress through sadness anything that I've gone through is the skateboarding community and I've made some of my best friends in that community um, uh, I first found this community at a place called Skate Lab it was in Ventura County Simi Valley and it closed down it kind of left all these people that loves skateboarding, has such a passion for it, and had such love for each other in this community with nowhere to go. And I'm kind of seeing the reverse, uh, reverse effect here. No one has anywhere to go. People are wa wandering the streets trying to find somewhere where they could spend time together pra practicing their craft and ha having, this, having this amazing experience that we all get to have. Um, I knew that the skate park would develop the skills. So many people here in Hemet, I've, I've seen it just dr even driving here. There's amazing skaters here. There's truly amazing skaters. Um, and it's a really healthy way for these uh, kids my age and older and younger to spend their time, get off the streets, and just spend time to skate with each other. And, um, yeah, thank you for your time. Thank you so much. My name is Stella, and I agree with everything said here. We need a skate park. Um, right now, we travel to Redlands for our grandson to use the skate park there. It's beautiful, but my biggest concern, the only thing I wanted to bring up was if you could keep it away from Florida Avenue. Gibble's a great place, but you have so many drug dealers, so many homeless. They're not safe because these are great kids, and you don't want them in danger. So if you could take it out. Further away from Florida, um, have good police protection because we ran into one problem at Redlands. In the morning when we got there, there was some young couples, you know, they look like they're in their early 20s, late teens, but they're drinking. The police get there, all they have them do is empty out their alcohol, that's it. They're still there. So that was my biggest concern was their safety. Thank you. Aaron, Ethan, Aaron, Ethan. Hi, my name is Terry Williams. I'm a community member here at 32 years. Been skating probably about the same amount of time. Uh, <coughs> skating beyond the being pro and all that. It's about fun, camaraderie, community, you know, pushing their limits and all that. That's what it's about. I helped build the skate park, the wheelhouse, for 20 years ago. And, you know, it hasn't been around for almost quite eight years ago. So I've seen it where, it, where they didn't have a place to go. When they used to go there every day, I just worked there and I skated there. And I've seen kids there. When that place was done, where they're going? They're going down you know, the streets and they're doing their thing. But this could also really help and really build the community up. Thank you. Thank you.
My name is Clayton Johnson. I kind of have the jitters right now. Uh, I've been riding scooters for the past three years now, and there's not been a skate park. I've been riding at my city, my city youth, and me, me and the boys, me Isaac and JC, the squad we have, we're we're, we're working to progress to what we're trying to do. Cause my dream is to eventually the world take pictures and like just just do my thing. But the only problem I have is that if there's a skate park here. Like what she brought up earlier, how, what are we going to do about the, the homeless here? Because there's, there's been a lot of things me and the boys have been through, and sometimes we have to defend against it. And I'm looking towards the skate park because it's going to help my challenges, help my strives, and I'm looking for the challenge. Just let you know, I'm looking for the challenge. And Thank you. That's all i got to say. Joy, Vanessa, Joy. My name's Ethan, and I've been skating for about five to six years. And uh, I just want to say that really, the only, like, there's no places to skate. Like, everywhere you want to skate is illegal. You can't just skate in front of the front yard. You won't get good doing that. Little kids won't get good doing that. It's not fun. And, like, when I go to a place and get kicked out, sometimes they'll even tell me to go to a skate park. And I can't do that unless it's, like, 30 minutes to an hour away. And, like... It really sucks. I'm pretty sure there's like some cops in that station over there that recognize me. <laughs> like, I don't know. This is really dumb that we have to get kicked out everywhere we want to skate. Like, there should be a poor game. That's it. Joy. Joy, Denisa. Joy, Denisa, Steven. Hi, uh, my name's Aaron. So I've been skateboarding for about 11 years. I know Ethan. He's the the younger generation, and he's he's killing it. He's killing it like for real. He's doing a great job on his on his skating. Um, I I go to my church. My church is at the youth center at Box Park, and we have our own ramps too. And and um, I've I've always been here in Emmett skateboarding. I've been living here for like 11 years. I have a lot of good friends. Um, I could call my brothers. I don't have real brothers, but I've met them out here just in the streets. And I, I call them my brothers. We bleed together. We, we go harder than other family members do with each other. It's like, it's like we're striving to perfect ourselves. And our community could really use this positive change. Um, what's it called? I, I don't know. <laughs> I had something to say. I'm really nervous. I'm not good with this, but... Uh, <laughs> What I'm saying is like our, the vert bowls, the street side, it, it's it's going to be cool if we can get something going like that. The Olympics, they're coming up and um, it could, this park would benefit like not just an individual, but it'll, it'll definitely benefit all the younger generations. It, it, it puts ambition in the person's soul. It puts, it puts um, like, I don't know, it's, it's something you could take pride in at the same time be humble in, you know? And um, most skateboarders are really peaceful, and um, we don't mean to get in trouble with everyone, because because we have been there, and um, we get hurt trying things, because we were limited, and um, having a home park, we wouldn't get hurt. We would feel comfortable. We wouldn't have to like risk our health doing something that it, people think is ignorant, because it's not. It's it's a uh, it's like a martial art. It's like an art. Um, it takes a lot of practice to master these, this art form, and um, I know everybody who does it does it. So, thank you. That's, that's right. I'm gonna try to get fast. I got bullet points. <laughs> so, <clears throat> my name's Stephen Castle. I'm 28. I've been riding since I was 19. I ride BMX. Uh, I get along with scooters, skaters, all of us are friends, it's all about just, you know, communication, but bullet points on this would be, I grew up in Menifee, California, I'm 28, there was no skate parks there when I was growing up. My best friend passed away from an overdose when I was growing up, it's a bummer, it's, it's hard for me to talk about. I felt like a skate park would have saved him. I also feel like, at a skate park, I'm a very good role model, so like, um, 
when your kids are there, I'm making sure no one's messing with them and stuff. I'm filming them. They're loving me. They see me riding, they're like, damn, this kid's cool. So another thing about it, too, is like crime is going to be there. Now, the thing about crime is it's always going to be there, but the kids that I grew up with, the kids I know are 22, they don't want to smoke, they don't want to drink, they don't want to do nothing. They're like, dude, you're crazy. You're out of your mind, Steve. And like, if I'm like, can I, I want to go get a beer. They're 22 now. They're like, nah. So then, like, as uh, Mayor Brown said, a skate park, you never are not going to, you're always going to progress. Never going to not. Um, I noticed, too, for me coming up, low-income kids need this, and the low-income ones are the ones that are the best. These kids who have money, they just, they just, they do not need it. They don't even care about low-income kids. They send it, and they're really good. So, also, like, when your house is dysfunctional, which comes with low income, it's a nice place for you to go to meet people and for you to collaborate with them. And something else that's really important that I find is that, let's say, when you're at the skate park, you make a community, and that's almost how I would find a job. I do construction, you know, I do trades and stuff. So, I'm there, and I'm talking to the kids. I find kids' jobs. And just mainly what I'm saying is, I've been to skate parks, there's going to be crime at a house. You can have a house party, you can, go to a, you can go to a park, there's crime. But the kids that I knew growing up, because they built the skate park in Minifee, psh, these kids are just laughing at me about how like my come up was, because I grew up riding a curb. So. Thank you so much. Yeah. Wesley, Wesley, Logan, Wesley, Logan, Gilbert. Hi, I'm Joey Esterbaum. Thank you for hearing this. I, I'm excited about this. I, I put some notes here. Um, through my son, I've seen skate culture, the way that there's camaraderie, that there's good health. Like, he is in super good health. Like, extreme, not able to be tired health. Um, but he also knows how to network with people, even talking to strangers in the healthy way that helps us, like, to grow. Um, and overcoming challenges, meeting, facing, overcoming challenges together. Right now he has to travel to Menifee, Yukaipa, or Redlands. And uh, sometimes when I go, I'll watch them. I'm supposed to sit and read maybe, but I just get entranced in actually watching them because it's such a beautiful art form. I think of it kind of like ballet. Ballet is very athletic, but it's an art. And so uh, Mayor Pro Tem Brown, you mentioned like, what if they master these certain features? You know, do they get bored and have to move on? But a ballet stage is flat and it's endless permutations as far as what they can do. And that's what I've seen with my son is just how creative he is and how it's endless, the possibilities. Um, what they can do with just one curb uh, is quite extraordinary. My only suggestion with this is that we go big. Um, it would be a shame to not really do it up. Um, it's an opportunity. We don't want to have to upgrade in the future, and we do want it to be attractive. But also because it's a growing sport, when people see people doing it, it's kind of it's inspiring. So it's going to attract more people. It'll attract people from neighboring neighborhood from neighboring communities, and also because of the Olympics. So I, I just say go big. I'm sure the community will support it. It'll cut back on trespassing, vandalism, uh, businesses and schools, that stuff. And I also am just a real supporter because of the low barrier to entry. It's egalitarian. There's not as much main. I mean, a football field requires maintenance and can also suffer serious injuries. But uh, my boy seems kind of indestructible on a skateboard. And uh, you won't have to mow the skate park. So thank you for hearing us. Vanessa Gomez. Um, my son asked me to talk. He's at the fire department right now. I can pull that down. A okay. Um, I'm here to. He got into scootering. Uh, Quinn or Q, I call him Q, is one of the best scooters in Isaac. All the kids are. And what I'm here to talk to is we do have a lot of homeless people, young, um, older men, who fight with these young boys, and it makes me want to cry because they're only 17, 16 years old. So I go and tie my son and I find out where he is and I go driving around just to go check on them to make sure there's no fight because there was an incident with a homeless man fighting and trying to take their scooter or stuff. Um, so I take him to, um, uh, I think it's Menifee. I went to downtown San Diego and I took him, I think it was Tony Hawk's made that one. And it was big, huge. And you know what I saw? I saw everyone. I thought, oh, they're gone. The skaters and scooters are going to fight. Oh, my goodness. I'm like, so they're, they're probably going to No. They did not fight. They respected one another, and they called it snake, I think, boys. I'm <laughs> learning. <laughs> and you know what? They're like, don't snake him. My son is five years old, or six. He's six years old. And what I see with all these grown men and young boys and little boys, 
is that they help each other. They, they support one another. And so I feel that this would be great for Hemet, California. We need this because not only is Hemet inside, I'm from San Diego, but Hemet's inside. To take a bus is like, it takes forever just to get to Menifee. So um, I think it would be a great opportunity for our, we have so many scooters, um, skaters, bikers, and these kids, um, they're the next generation. And let's do this for the kids and for our community. And um, I just want to thank you guys for even giving us the opportunity for being here today and for allowing us to Um, my name is Logan, and I just started skating like a year ago or so, and I didn't really have a lot of friends going into high school, but all of my best friends now that are super close with me, I've met through skateboarding, and I've seen progress that I've gone through with skateboarding, but I like to get to that next level, I need somewhere to do it. I don't have anywhere to do it. I just got done, I've been, I ride every day, and I just got done doing it today, but I didn't have anywhere to really go. We just go around, not doing anything. So I also have a little brother that looks up to me a lot. And he's trying to skateboard also because, you know, he wants to be, he's eight years old. And um, somewhere for him to eventually go in the future also would be super ben beneficial because, like I said, we don't really have me right now. And especially for me trying to learn to get to the ne next step, to do tricks downstairs and stuff, I need somewhere to be able to do that. And if I don't have somewhere to do, a safe, safe place to do that, then I'm never going to be able to progress to that next level. And that's pretty much it. Thank you. Hello, my name is Wesley. Uh, I grew up in Menifee, moved there in 2000, and that was really cool. I could go outside, do a lot of things. There wasn't there wasn't ever a skate park out there when I was growing up, but I could go outside and do things. And I moved out to Hemet. I've only been out here for a year, and it's a cool place. I just really don't want to go outside at all. <laughs> and I think a skate park is somewhere where I'll, where I'll actually go, other than the grocery store. <laughs> And, um, yeah, so, like, I moved here, and I'm like, what kind of people live here? You know, you see everybody on the streets. You don't really get any good feelings about the place, I'm sorry to say, but, I mean, I just, like, seeing all these people here, I'm like, I'm wondering where they come from. <laughs> but if there was a skate park out here, I'd probably see a lot of them there, and it'd just be a good way to connect with people and positive things to happen for Hammett. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you. Shelly, Shelly and Anthony, Shelly and Anthony. I'll try to summarize since uh, it's already been an hour. Um, I've been out here for 15 years and I've yet to see a location where kids can actually, uh, you know, release stress and do activities that they actually want where they're, they feel welcome. We have parks here, but it's all for uh, baseball, soccer, your tennis rackets and basic sports that, uh, you know, you sign your kid up for. But you don't have anything that uh, skaters and scooters and, 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 and bikers can, can go to. Uh, the, the closest uh, skate park is Menifee, and I think that uh, they charge a fee to get inside. And there's a lot of pros and cons to these things, but uh, I've seen a lot of skate parks throughout my years. And the one that we go to to spectate is the uh, Venice Beach and they have a humongous uh, skate park out there. It's right there on the beach. And like someone mentioned earlier, a lot of these kids, a lot of these kids, kids their, your perception of these kids are, oh, they, they do drugs, they drink, and all that. No, most of these skaters, they have to release stress, and they need endurance. So they are out there with uh, gallons of water, not beer, not alcohol. So uh, this would be a great a thing to be for the community and I think that these kids need it and the liability aspects just to summarize again I think that uh, there's a lot of concepts and I think for registration online everyone has a cell phone and you can register and sign your waiver if you will and uh, or uh, charge at the gate because uh, that would possibly potentially keep the homeless out if you charge a $2 fee to get in homeless won't get in thank you thank you we are going to go past the 7 o'clock. We're going to finish this up before we go on to our regular council meeting. My name is Shelly Abbott. I am a homeowner, business owner that has been in this valley for over 15 years. 
I have a son who is now 20 who skates. I used to skate, um, but my body is my income as an equipment operator, so I'll stick with that. Um, I'm here to say that skateboarding is a very important thing for our community in so many ways and a lot of people have expressed. For kids that have had issues and problems and things at home. Um, my son, for example, was born with cleft feet, Mobius syndrome, Poland syndrome. The meaning he has no chest muscle, one hand swallowing the other. He sees with one eye and he had feet facing each other. Doctors told me my son would never be able to do sports. I thought, okay, well sports is baseball, football and those things. Yeah, he couldn't run kindergarten. He couldn't run as fast as the other kids. I never stopped him. Keep going. Um, anyway, so all I'm going to say is I introduced him to skateboarding because I knew he can carve and he, you know, his feet can just roll and he'd be fine. I knew motorcycle riding as well, riding the bike and snowboarding were the things that I do. Skateboarding is the one thing that he has found. Um, it helped him through the bullying of school because with his disabilities, it's a visual thing where people look at him and see that he looks different. He was bullied really hard in middle schools here in our city. He made it through that through skateboarding. It was a really big thing. And the community and the people that skateboard that he skated with, they don't judge you. They accept you for who you are, no matter what color, female, male, none of it. You're just accepted. It helps people, kids with autism, they love to skateboard, kids with Asperger's, kids that are unique, that don't relate, they'll find that, and it gives them something. It's a beautiful thing, if you guys just even understood. And the fact that it can bring some your kids to the Olympics in a town coming from Hemet is just amazing, if you just only understand. I'm also, I volunteer in Skate Park Builds. I have worked on a park under Chicano Bridge in San Diego for free, volunteer, because Chicano Park was with a nonprofit. I also helped build Valley Center Skate Park, which the city donated the land and they didn't have the funds, and skateboarders all came up with the money and built that park, and everybody did it for free. They did whatever they could to get a skate park for their community. So I'm just saying, we need it. We need it, and it can benefit us. Hello, City Council. Um, my name is Anthony Errejon. Um, I represent Hemet Gatekeepers, and uh, I've also grown up in the community uh, for the last 20 years. I am uh, about 36 now. I came here when I was 17, and I also uh, wanted to skate when I was younger, but I never learned how to skate. I saw friends that did skate, and uh, my example of skating was probably sitting on a skateboard and then uh, letting it like roll into the grass and try to make it flip, but I never actually got it to flip. So, but um, yeah, I mean, uh, I grew up here and uh, helped out with a lot of the youth ministries for over uh, 20 years, and also just helped my father in Victory Outreach as well as Hemet Gatekeepers. Uh, what I've no noticed about Hemet is that presence is everything, and uh, if the skate park is going to be open, that presence is a very big factor to this. Obviously, we have you know jewels like. Uh, the library, very beautiful structure, uh, but it's right next to the Hemet Police Department, meaning that, you know, presence is everything, and we've noticed that when we patrol the streets that when there's more presence, that there's less crime, and there's less things of that nature that take place. So just, you know, considering wherever the skate park is going to go, that there is um, presence, and this is not commercial for Hemet gatekeepers, but just saying, in general, there should be presence and there should be um, that factor there where people are considering, hey, you know, we want to watch out for our kids. I want to be able to take my son because I had taken him to the Redland Skate Park and it's beautiful. I like to not travel and not spend the gas and just come to him and do that. Uh, but just taking in cons consideration the presence and the safety of our community. So thank you. Thanks so much. Mm -hmm. Well, I guess we're done with um, those that wanted to speak. I got one more if you don't mind. <clears throat> My name is Chad Sorensen. I've been born and raised here in Hemet. Started once part of the first group of skateboarders that were here and terrorizing the banks and getting kicked out of everywhere around here in Hemet. Um, and, yeah, there's going to be certain places where there's a lot of places where there's homeless people here in Hemet. And the main part of that, to get rid of that, would be to police it a little bit more, make sure that the skaters as a community will definitely take care of their part as well, but uh, making sure that the homeless are aware that that's not a place to be, especially if it was something like Gibble Park. Because, I mean, any of the parks here, Weston Park, they're taken over kind of by homeless. And it, um, if there was a community where the skate park, between the skaters and the cops, <clears throat> police rather, um, you know, they could definitely make a movement. And regarding